I wonder, is, is the outlook for semis that bad? Is Intel a, a foreshadowing of things to come? Yeah, so first off, it's really important to separate uh, the different sectors of the semiconductor market. Uh, there's memory that's just taken a beating based on oversupply, lack of demand, and somewhat of a price war between Micron and Samsung. Uh, there are markets that AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA operate in. And then there's this, what I like to refer to as analog markets, which are uh, serve markets like the automotive, uh, industrial IoT, and, and things like that. And Right now, I mean, memory is has come in and out of its beating, uh, but I think what we're looking at right now is these very high-priced, high ASP, high-profit margin challenges in the digital space uh, for AMD, uh, Intel, and NVIDIA. And I think that AMD will perform better than, than Intel did when it shows up, primarily because it serves a few different markets than Intel does, but AMD is also insulated by its giant acquisition Xilinx, which cuts out the rough edges and operates in spaces that have more durability uh, than Intel. Uh, okay, okay. so if you, if you take a look at the reasons why, you, you mentioned certain specific parts of the market, like memory, graphics, server, data center, that sort of thing. If we're looking at the outperformance so far early in 2023, we've seen the likes of NVIDIA and AMD and right. some others do, do pretty well. Does that say then that there is a focus now on some of those higher end chips, especially for a company like NVIDIA, and especially as we hear more and more about things like machine learning and artificial intelligence, a la chat GPT and everything else? Long term, the this insatiable demand for compute and AI to fuel workloads like ChatGPT and OpenAI really bode well uh, for both the, the high-end digital space, but also the memory space. I think what we're in is we're in a, a level of uncertainty uh, for the next probably at least six months where uh, we question uh, that demand. I believe that the PC market will remain in a trough for probably another six months. The data center market is split into two markets, really, it's enterprise and cloud. And I think Intel showed that the enterprise market is, is way down. And that's one of the challenges that uh, I see for this market moving forward. When AMD comes out tomorrow, we're going to get a glimpse at how cloud did. But based on the layoffs of all the cloud giants, I don't think it's going to be very pretty for the cloud build out. And the cloud build out, that ebbs and flows about every six months. So again, net net, about six months more of short term challenge. Okay. Now, uh, you mentioned cloud. I want to get your broader take on tech in the few moments we have left here. A note from Bank of America's trading desk over the weekend saying in part that the Qs and the outperformance in the NASDAQ 100 so far this year, quote, most strategists seem to believe that almost all other regions and all other sectors are better longs than U.S. and U.S. tech. So we are now presented with a pretty rare opportunity where buying big U.S. tech stocks is a contrarian call. Is this the reversal, Patrick? Is now tech a contrarian call? And, and that's the reason why the outperformance is happening in 2023? You and I both have been around for a long time. And this is just the way that things swing. Tech was the buy, and now tech is a contrarian view. I think that uh, investors need to look at it from a long-term pr perspective and ask, are consumers and businesses better off with high technology moving down the line? You have autonomous cars coming up. You have the build-out of the industrial I IoT. You have things in AI that most people think could never be done before that are just coming to the surface with chat G GPT. So tech is a long call right now. And I believe that uh, it is going to be the driver of the world economy for the next decade.